Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, then I'll begin. (laughs) Now, there has been a lot of hype around the potential of artificial intelligence, especially in traditional industries such as manufacturing. But historically, AI has been too expensive or too complex to deploy at scale. But now, with pressure to maintain quality products to keep up with those irregular consumer demands with fewer people on the factory floor due to the pandemic, we're starting to see new solutions emerging. So with this in mind, a company called Neurala launched VIA, which stands for Vision Inspection Automation. And that new software is aimed at helping manufacturers ensuring quality inspection on the production line while scaling with increasing consumer demand. So it seems to me that they're using technology to solve a real world problem. So I invited Max Versace onto the podcast today and thankfully... He said yes. So buckle up and hold on tight because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Boston so we can speak with Max now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? For sure. Uh, Thanks for having me. My name is Max Versace. I am uh, uh, the uh, CEO and one of the co-founders of Neuralum. Uh, Background, artificial intelligence, you know, more than 20 years uh, as of today. Uh, We started a company back in 2006 out of Boston University to commercialize our research in in AI. And, uh, you know, uh, many years later, we are uh, deployed in uh, many uh, tens of millions of machines and uh, bringing AI to fruition in uh, uh, mostly industrial uh, um, manufacturing customers. Excellent. And before we talk about Neural, uh, there's been a lot of hype at the moment around the potential for AI in the manufacturing industry. But can you tell me a little bit more about how artificial intelligence has, by the large part, been mostly too expensive or too complex to deploy at scale? Can you just tell me a little bit about the problem there and set the scene? Yeah, absolutely. So manufacturing has, uh, has been a user of um, um, you know complex software, including artificial intelligence, for many years. And the uh, Traditional machine vision, which is a sort of a precursor of this more um, uh, performing and complex artificial intelligence, has been used for many, many years. Um, so the, 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 the trick, though, is that um, traditional uh, artificial intelligence, as opposed to you know, today's artificial intelligence, which is more uh, inspired by how the brain works, therefore learns by its own, traditional methodology mostly relied on intelligence of, uh, of the programmer or the technician. And that includes also traditional machine vision. So, for instance, you know, if you wanted to set up, um, you know, a camera that could detect a scratch, the the programmer had to think of all sorts of different ways in which this scratch could uh, could appear in a product, let's say. Whereas traditional AI had to do that; it was fairly cumbersome to to build, which also means expensive. Today's artificial intelligence can be driven by data. So all the intelligence of the programmer or the, the scientist goes into designing the, uh, a system that is able to learn from example. So actually the teaching of, of the example is pretty simple. It can be done by anybody without much knowledge of AI, which also means more inexpensive. So today's AI are powered by learning, which makes the training much simpler. Therefore, the, the, the solution ends up being less expensive and more powerful at, at the end of the day. And with all that in mind, Neurala then launched a VIA, Vision Inspection Automation, which is new software to help manufacturers ensure quality inspection on the production line, but while also scaling with increasing consumer demand. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and maybe provide a, a before and after example, that will just help people listening understand the difference that it can make? Absolutely. So the, the Vision Inspection Automation, or VIA, um, was... Uh, the culmination of many years of research and the uh, product market fit, right? So we, we developed this uh, technology uniquely tailored for very, very quick learning uh, at the edge in particular, so on, on very small compute power uh, attached to a camera. And we developed this with NASA, so it was um, applied to autonomous robotics. But it turns out, with our surprise, that the majority of the demand for the technology came from the manufacturing space where as opposed to be a robot that you know, roams on Mars, you have a, a, 
a very big industrial machine that operates incessantly. So very, very, you know, uh, devoted to, to, to building products 24 seven, sometimes, you know, with a week off uh, during the year. And uh, the, the, the constraints are very similar to, to uh, operational constraints that you might have in a robot uh, roaming on Mars. So you have to rely mostly on compute power that sits on board of the machine. You, you cannot rely on, uh, on an intermittent internet connection. You have to be quick. You have to configure it quickly on the device and so forth. So the, um, we developed this product to answer uh, the demand for manufacturing. And the, the demand for manufacturing were mostly uh, driven by, before the pandemic, by the, um, the need of innovation and uh, cope with the reduced workforce availability, in particular for tasks like quality inspection, which were you know, dull and boring. In the post-pandemic world, is uh, all these things are uh, amplified by even a more acute lack of uh, a workforce and the need to you know cope with the uh, intermittent workforce so the demand for artificial intelligence that helps supplement additional terawise in uh, in industrial manufacturing of sample is increased um you know we are deploying in many different use cases uh for instance we are we are deploying in the food into industry uh commercial bakery are some of the use cases that we are working with where you have to detect uh, the ingredients that, that come in in, uh, uh, in making bread, for instance, and uh, you know you'd be surprised how many times the wrong ingredients are uh, are shipped and uh, and are embedded into into this bakery, only to find out at the very end, uh, sampling left and right a few uh, a few a few exemplars coming out of the uh, of the chain of, pro of production that uh, the wrong ingredient went in. And so if you if you start to devote some attention to the ingredients before they get manufactured, then you can reduce waste as well. So you can catch, for instance, visually if the wrong ingredient has been supplied in the you know at the beginning of the production. And so you can catch that, block uh, immediately the production, substitute the product and uh, reduce waste and increase your yield uh, overall. So that's just one of many examples where you can uh, essentially scatter um, thousands of eyes in your production system to make sure that everything goes uh, smoothly. And with less data required and faster trading, I'd imagine it would create a more compelling case of ROI when increasing inspection rates, especially in the current climate. But is that right? That's right, yes. Yeah. So the, you know, the AI doesn't come in, um, in the same form and shape, right? So the, the, there are many different kinds of AI. And the one that we have uh, built and pioneered with NASA enables you to train with very simple uh, and very few examples. So sort of like, you know, if you interact with a human, you don't have to, to show 30,000 examples of a chair. I just show you a chair, I tell you that's a chair, and then you learn instantaneously on the fly, right? So we have this sort of very quick configurable, uh, technically called one-shot learning, just to give you the, the, the flavor that happens in one shot. And so that enables just uh, anybody, like the technician in the, in the manufacturing line, to just show a few examples very quickly. Um, and then get the line to understand that that's a, that that is what to expect, right? And so our technology also enables um, the, the 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 operator to understand if if there is a deviation uh, from that standard. So you can show um, you know that's a normal say sh sheet of metal, and then the system will tell you, well, I see something abnormal based on the example that you show me. So very very simply, very transparently the the user can configure a new product and then let it run until something odd happens. And in terms of enabling manufacturers with this flexibility to train and run multiple AI models based on changes in products they produce or levels of consumer demand, who would do this? Who are your customers? And do they need an in-house AI expert or does the software do that for them? Okay, so let's start by from the last question. So they, no, they don't need an AI expert. And that's actually the whole point for us to develop idea is um, to um, bypass the need of an AI expert. And as you can imagine, as you scatter thousands of eyes uh, in your production line, that the, having an AI expert doesn't scale, right? So you have to uh, make sure that the AI is very simple and very easy to customize by any operator that uh, doesn't have any, any skills. In terms of examples, so we, uh, first of all, we are announcing a bunch of uh, customers in September. So I. I, I have to ask for some more patience for, for a month till uh, until the beginning of September. But our customers are in the industrial manufacturing, for instance, in the, in the um, manufacturing of uh, um, sorry, manufacturing of, of packaging machines. 
So these are large uh, European manufacturers that build machines for packaging consumer goods. Uh, so anything from uh, you know your uh, uh, coffee uh, that you consume in the single uh, shot monodose to uh, tea, tea bags to uh, all sorts of consumer products, including also masks, uh, you know, more recently for uh, uh, prevention of the spread of coronavirus, all the way to food and beverage and, uh, you know, and, and so forth. So those are large customers of us. Others are in the food industry um, that build uh, food directly. So they, they use industrial machines, but they have very large uh, industrial manufacturing complex for uh, mass producing food. And uh, others are in the steel industry, and uh, and uh, you know many more um, are uh, we don't know because we are selling our technology to system integrators and uh, uh, manufacturing of camera, who in turn have a, have many many different customers in uh, uh, that we you know we don't necessarily have access directly. So very very broad adop adoption. Uh, you can uh, you can imagine that if you can teach the system essentially anything, you can use it virtually on you know any. Uh, production uh, uh, process that you have. And I'm curious, do you have any stats around how artificial intelligence was able to improve performance? Is there anything that you can share there? Well, you know, AI has been around for many, many decades. And uh, the, I would say that um, there were two, initially there were two camps on artificial intelligence. The first was, uh, um, you know, sort of relying on the intelligence of uh, uh, the scientists to come up with all sorts of rules and uh, uh, decision trees, if you want, to be able to uh, understand uh, the world. So let me give you a practical example, right? So there are two, essentially two camps to develop AI. Uh, one is called GoFi, or good old-fashioned AI, and the other one is called neural networks, which then morph into deep learning. So if I show you an apple, the traditional GoFi uh, scientists would have say, okay, if you see something roundish red with um, a, a little thing popping on the, on the top, then there is 70% chance it's an apple. Uh, a, a traditional a neural network guy would have say, I am going to uh, specify an algorithm uh, that um, emulates how the brain learns what's an apple. And so all the intelligence in one case in GoFi is, is building these complex decision trees Whereas in neural networks is to design learning rules that mathematically emulates how the brain learns. And so the result of the race between these two horses, if you will, AI horses, as uh, is shown the second one, the neural network that fortunately is where I bet my money in that, on that horse <laughs> 20 years ago uh, has won, right? So traditional artificial intelligence has lost uh, and the, the the, the victory is determined by not by philosophy or by you know articles uh, published in papers, but by uh, competition in data sets. So AI has, has dominated the, the neural network is dominated uh, by by you know winning these competitions, and so that camp uh, has now uh, dwarfed all the other artificial intelligence approaches and enables um, you know the to bring uh, to bring uh, uh, essentially a copy or, or an emulation of the human eye or the human brain into contexts that before were uh, impermeable to to you know to, to this to this innovation and neurala is also the company behind brain builder which is the ai software platform powering visual inspections on over 50 million devices around the world which is incredible so can you tell me a little bit more about that because i suspect that it will give listeners a, a little peek behind the curtain around the tech that's powering all these devices that many of us take for granted uh, neurala has been around for a while uh, we have worked uh, with many different customers at the beginning you know before uh, i would say 2017 uh, most of our uh, interaction were um, sort of adapting our core technology to a particular use case, sometimes brought to us by an you know, OEM or original equipment manufacturer. So these ranged, ranged from um, smartphone manufacturers to camera manufacturers to robot manufacturers, drone operators, uh, all the way to industrial machines more recently. So these are all use cases where we have deployed uh you know in the in the smartphone for instance the volumes are going to be much much larger so there's those are millions of exemplars um and the, and the uses are mostly related with camera usage right so in, in the case of a cell phone um we put our technology work to enable for instance smartphones to create stunning pictures and customize the style of 
picture modification by each user by learning how this user likes to take pictures, uh, all the way to robots and, and drones inspecting infrastructure. So looking at processes and products or, or uh, an aisle of the supermarket, learning the things that are relevant. So we have adapted this technology to all these use cases. In uh, uh, 2019, we launched uh, a platform called Brain Builder that takes this technology, uh, our unique uh, uh, tech developed for NASA and uh, puts it in a platform so that people can use it in um, self-service, right? So they can uh, upload some data, build a visual AI system and then deploy it on any device, right? Uh, from uh, a small single board computer all the way to a cluster. And uh, um, what we learned during this uh, exercise, you know, we call this uh, almost a Roshan test. Like we send, we create a platform and then users tell us uh, what's good for. And the majority of the, of the demands of, of the request for, the, for, for deployment, in fact, came from industrial manufacturers that have a very precise problem. Uh, and their problem is a very good fit for our technology because it's uh, a brain builder enables to train very fast, little data at the edge. And so we were uniquely qualified to solve that problem, which is actually pretty big. But in our terms, is actually a subset of what uh, we can do, you know, if you look at all sorts of different applications. And so we, what we did uh, this year is we supplement the brain builder uh, and we embed it in a larger product called VIA, which is visual inspection automation, which includes brain builder and another piece of software that enables specifically these industrial manufacturers to use our technology even better than before with just brain builder. And sort of we are going into this path of uh, specializing the tech and solving uh, a problem, which is actually providing a solution for, for the industrial manufacturers. There's so much cool work that you're doing at the moment. It's great to hear real world scenarios of how you're making a difference in there. But is there anything else that you can share about how AI or emerging technology in general is going to continue to transform traditional industries such as manufacturing? Well, I mean, the, the interesting thing that we have noticed in uh, 2020 was uh, a change of the mood and the change in the dialogue around AI um, before. You know, let's say uh, in 2019, much of the press was um, that robots are taking over the world, the, the industrial machines are going to become sentient and uh, get out of the factory and kill us all like insects and uh, all this nonsense from uh, uh, people who don't really understand AI, but all they, all they understand is uh, how to get attention from the press. Um, so the pandemic hit and all of a sudden, these people hopefully and thankfully disappeared under a rock. And uh, all, the, all the, the people who actually need a robot, they started to ask, well, where are they? Right? Where can I get a robot that disinfects my hospital? How can I get a robot that substitutes people I don't have in the factory floor? And so all of a sudden, for reasons that are uh, completely independent from the dialogue around the AI, people have understood that uh, it's better to have intelligent automation than stupid one. And, uh, you know, if, if I say like that, um, it's obvious, but uh, it wasn't obvious in 2019 where people, where the dialogue was, we're going to lose our jobs, uh, robots are going to become sentient and so forth. So I think that as necessity has become uh, important, uh, people's brain has actually tuned out of their, out of Hollywood into the real life and realized that, uh, you know, it's better to have intelligent automation rather than uh, you know, no automation or stupid ones. And so that, you know, among among the, the negative things that have happened this year, I think that, that uh, an injection of realism is, is a positive thing. And it's so refreshing to hear you say that. And for anyone listening that could be in any industry at all that's fascinated by the work that you're doing, wanting to find out more information, what's the, the best way of finding you guys online and also contacting your team if they do have any questions? Absolutely. So our website is uh, www.neurala, which is N-E-U-R-A-L-A.com. Uh, my name is Max Versace, which is all one word. Versace, like the designer, easy. You put the Max in front and the, I have a website where people can ask me, you know, all sorts of questions they, they, they want. And so these are the two best ways to find me. 
Excellent. Well, I'll add those links to the blog post that will accompany this episode just so people can find you nice and easily. But one of the things that I do love doing on this Daily Tech podcast is getting people to think about how technology is impacting an industry where, where you don't automatically associate technology and hearing about manufacturing and how you're transforming it with this vision inspection automation and how it's actually increasing inspection rates, decreasing human intervention and allowing smaller batches of products to be inspected. It's great. I think it really just enables everyone to see the kind of difference that it can make in a more traditional environment too. So thanks so much for taking the time to come on and share that story with me today. Thank you, Neil, and uh, thank you for, for having me. So with less data required and faster training, Vision Inspection Automation is hoping to em- is aiming to improve ROI by increasing inspection rates, decreasing human intervention, and allowing smaller batches of products to be inspected. And it will also allow production facilities to avoid wasted resources by catching those defects early, while giving manufacturers the flexibility to train and run multiple AI models based on changes in products that they produce or the level of consumer demand. So the fact that they're using technology to solve a very real problem in manufacturing, and let's be honest, a problem that not many of us know about, I think is incredibly cool and so important. But as always, if you work in manufacturing or indeed any industry that you don't automatically associate technology with and you've got a similar story to share, email me techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Keep your messages coming in and we'll create a more positive future narrative around technology and artificial intelligence. That's it for today's episode. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll speak to another tech leader in another industry. But all that's left for me to say is thank you for listening, as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.